Good morning. My name is Jason McKinney. I, um, I'm an Anglican minister and uh, a theological educator. The, check. The, <laughs> the ministry that I do is, is community-based ministry, and the community that I'm based in is the wonderful neighborhood of Parkdale, the west end of this Parkdale in the house. <laughs> we, we, there we go. <laughs> Now, Parkdale is an interesting place because of the increasing pressures of gentrification, but also because of the extraordinary experiments in, in radical democracy and post-capitalist practices. Now, in my business as a, an, an Anglican priest, I am often asked to give sermons on a Sunday morning. It's slightly less common to be asked to give a sermon in a context like this. But that's what I've been asked to do. Now, I suspect that there could be some misgivings in the room about that happening, and I, I get that. There are reasons that you are all gathered here on a Sunday morning and not somewhere else. So I have no illusions about persuading you to get to church or to mosque or to synagogue, to a sweat lodge or to a temple. But what I would like to do in just the next couple of minutes is to commend to you a practice, a practice that is cultivated in different ways in all spiritual communities. Because I think as engaged citizens, as innovators and change makers, as organizers, activists, and intellectuals, as people with a deep commitment to democratic transformation, what we need and what spiritual communities have is a grammar of the spiritual. A grammar of the spiritual. Put another way, I simply mean that this is a way of speaking about spirituality without necessarily dictating its content. Now, when I say spirituality, I don't mean the opposite of materiality. I mean, instead, the more than material. That excess that adheres to our material practices, and especially to our collective material practices. So it's this intensity, it's this meaning that is sometimes numinous, this experience or this quality, this je ne sais quoi, that we have all experienced at some point, even if it has flashed up only momentarily, perhaps during an intense conversation over several drinks, perhaps in an erotic encounter, perhaps in collective political action, perhaps in an aesthetic experience. But without a grammar, without a way of speaking about such intensities, they either dissipate or become a kind of dragon that we chase. What religious communities have figured out it is, is that it is within the intensive quality of collective experience that durable community can be formed and that people can be transformed. So even though you may be put off by traditional religion, it may be the case that you don't learn what to say about spirituality from these traditions, but you might learn how to speak of the spiritual. Our movements for democratic change can benefit from the participation of religious and spiritual communities, not simply as representatives in a coalition, but as communities who at their best have learned how to root solidarity and transformative practices in the abiding intensity of the more than material, in that thickened quality of the spiritual. So I will conclude by offering one simple but important rule for any spiritual grammar. It's a rule that almost any traditional religion will recognize in some way or another. That is to say that sometimes the spiritual is best articulated not in speech, but in silence. And so it's on that note that I hand things over to my friend and spiritual comrade, Tita Ananko, to share, us, share with us a, a practice of mindfulness. Good morning. I'm going to lead you through a very simple meditation practice it's called the three-minute breathing space. Three minutes is notional. Anna has said I can only have one. <laughs> but it's a great little practice. It's something that you can do anywhere, anytime, throughout the day, when you just need a little bit of a check-in and a little bit of quiet. So I'm going to struggle with my bell, and then we will start. Okay. I have to actually hold it. Okay. 
in preparing for this practice, let's all try to sit comfortably with both feet planted on the floor and spines erect, but relaxed. Close the eyes, if that is okay with you. Or keep your eyes half shut and half open, lowering and softening the gaze. Then bringing your awareness to your inner experience and asking, what is my experience right now? What thoughts, feelings, and body sensations are here? Then redirecting your attention to focus on the physical sensations of breathing, following the breath all the way in and all the way out, using the breathing itself to anchor you in the present moment. Breathing in, I know that I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I am breathing out. And now expanding the field of your awareness around the breathing so that it includes a sense of the body as a whole, whole body breathing. Continuing this practice until the bell rings, and as best as you can, bringing this expanded awareness to the rest of your day.